walking up to an active volcano which erupts every 15 minutes. It was one of the most crazy things I've ever seen and I can highly recommend to do it, but you need to be prepared. And how to be prepared for this crazy, crazy hike, I'll tell you now. This experience was one of my top five experiences I had while traveling. I haven't actually planned to do it, but then a lot of people in my hostels, they were like, oh my God, yeah, I just climbed up. It was like one of the most incredible things in life I've ever done. So I was like, oh yeah, maybe. But then I was like, oh, it's dangerous. Can I do it? Because I'm not actually a fit, fit person. I mean, I love to hike, but my condition is like, not here, not non-existent at the moment. Anyways, so I was doubting myself a bit if I can do it or not, but then people told me like, hey, you can do it and you should do it. Like, you're already here. So I was like, okay, let's go. You can just book a tour and you can go up there and you're gonna meet people, just start talking to them when you get up there. Uh, when you're up there no problem also when you do the overnight hike which i highly recommend to do two days and one night up there so you sleep close to the volcano to the active volcano i mean you sleep on top of the not on top a bit further down they're just gonna put you in a tent with other people or maybe you can also ask to be alone in a tent but i don't recommend that because it gets really cold so it's better to have a person next to you but you're gonna be fine also as a solo traveler as a solo female traveler you will be fine up there a bit more information about akatenango so akatenango is this volcano where you hike up to to see fuego which is the erupting volcano Akatenango is about 3,976 meters high and you will hike up there and it will be about 1,600 meters that you climb up in around 6 to 7 hours. Or if you're really slow even, then it even takes more time. Depends on you. My group, it took us uh, like six hours and we took a lot of breaks which is really important because if you get up there you need to do it slowly like really slowly otherwise you will get altitude sickness and also why you should get up there really fast makes absolutely no sense because nobody gives you a price for that and you actually just put yourself in danger so there was actually a couple that went up there alone not with a tour and they thought i don't know they thought they were running or i don't i don't know what what they were doing but they went up there really fast and then one of them got sick and yeah it was not not fun for them i'd say so take a lot of breaks how to get up to akatenango what most people do is they hike up for like six to seven hours they just hike up with their backpacks and they go there then you can also go up there by horse. I saw two girls going up there by horse and I was like, poor horse, poor, poor horse. <laughs> but you can do that. You just pay a bit more and it's weird. And actually, I think hiking up is better for you than being on a horse because being on a horse in that height, I, it's a bit scary. So I wouldn't do the, uh, the horse. And another option is you can go by helicopter if you have around, I think, three to four hundred US dollars. You can do that. You don't want to hike, you can do it. Won't be the same experience, but you're still up and see this volcano. So <laughs> whatever you like. So there are many, many different companies that you can join to go up there they all have similar packages with some you can do it in one day with some in two days some include certain things others don't include certain things it depends what you like yeah, there are smaller groups bigger groups whatever it costs around like 50 dollars up to a hundred 150 dollars depending on which tour you go if you do a private tour if you do a tour with like 20 people of course it's cheaper than the private tour it depends on the accommodation you're sleeping in some have like sheds little houses up there some have tents some have tents in a kind of like shed container thing there's everything so you just need to know what you like the tours are soy tours there's 
Pachamama tours, there's O Expeditions, CA tours, V Viking tours, Witches and Charlies, Akate Local Adventure, and many, many more. So just choose, I link everything below. Me, myself, I went with Soy Tours. I was really happy. It was fun. People were nice. We were a big group. I don't mind big groups. We were a group of like, I think, 20 people, 25 people. The guides were really nice. Most of them didn't speak uh, English, just Spanish. Everything was provided. Food was provided. Food was really good. You didn't need to carry food up there. You just needed to carry your water with you, which I recommend to bring about four liters of water. That's going to be enough. Or if you can bring also Gatorade. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. There's like this special drink which keeps you hydrated. So that's really good because you're going to sweat a lot up there. And just take a bit some snacks with you. But they're going to provide you with enough food. I brought too many snacks with me. So you don't need that. But of course it also depends if you're 2 meters tall and uh, 80 kilos. You probably need more food than I. You know, like, yeah. Just just feel like how much you need and uh, if you have too much food you can always give it to other people, you know, someone will happily take it. It was quite affordable. I paid 500 quetzales, which is the Colombian uh, currency, which is about 63 euros dollars, 58 euros. What's included? With soy tours, like I said, everything was included. They even provide warm clothing, which you can get. So when you arrive there, they're going to make a short introduction and then they ask you to pay for your trip. Then they tell you, oh, you can get warm clothing in one of the rooms and also that you can buy additional or rent additional things like a stick for five quetzales, which you need. Please get that stick for five quetzales because... It's not just useful to go up, but when you go down, it's super useful. Because going down is like the worst. The worst. It's so slippery because of this volcano sand. And you... Uh, it's just for your knees and everything. And when you're above 30, you know what I'm talking about. It's like your knees. You need... If you can... Bring hiking sticks, like really good ones, because there you can just rent like a wooden like stick and then you can uh, walk up there. So I wish I had uh, like normal hiking sticks, so if you can bring them. Bring also a torch because on the next morning you need one and you need one on your head because you need your hands to climb up or go up or hold on certain things to get up there in the morning when you do the sunrise hike to the top of Akatenango. Don't bring a torch that you need to to have in your hands. Bring one in that you have on your head. Then bring water, about four liters, but I already mentioned that. And bring enough warm clothes. And oh yeah, toilet paper. Bring toilet paper. And for the altitude, bring altitude sickness tablets if you think you can get sick you know some people are good with altitude others are not i was fine because i walked up like super slowly like a turtle um i felt like a turtle because my backpack was heavy because i brought so much uh water yeah but just be slow and but it can hit you you know you don't know how your body reacts to that especially when you're not used to go up a mountain like that or it's not a mountain, it's a volcano. You should also bring good shoes. Don't go up with sneakers. Get a shoe with like a profile on the soles. You don't need to have crazy hiking shoes, just like trekking shoes. Or But you, I mean, you can go up there in sneakers, but it's just not, I, I just don't recommend it. Also bring plasters for blisters. Always useful if you have a blister. Then, oh my God, this is really important. <laughs> Bring something like a buff or something that you can put over your nose and over your mouth because the sand and the ash of the volcano, especially when going down, it will come into your face and you're going to have like two to five days after the hike, you will still sneeze the, the ash, the sand, the 
just everything. So try to cover it with a buff, with a scarf, whatever you have, but just bring something to cover it. It's going to be so, so useful. And of course, sunglasses because it's super bright up there. And of course, don't forget sunscreen because the, the sun is pretty intense on the whole hike so do that and come in layers like what to wear come bring layers like get a shirt that is really water absorbent and just put layers on don't get like really heavy stuff but if you get warm stuff from their clothing try to be there in there first and then you get good jackets because it gets cold i was really cold even though i had a lot of stuff on i even brought my poncho it will get cold up there. It depends how sensitive you are to to cold. I'm sensitive to cold, so I was cold. When you sleep up in a mountain, it's gonna be cold as well. So prepare for that, but the mattress is amazing. The sleeping bags are amazing, just, yeah, it's great. About going to toilet there, just going to nature. They have a toilet in their base camp, so it tours, but it's like up the hill, up the mountains. I almost fell from the freaking volcano when I tried to go to toilet there. So just go behind a tree, you know, just make your life easier. And uh, an important thing, you're a guest in nature, you're a guest on a volcano, just bring like every trash you bring up there, bring it down. They actually collect it there, but you can also do your share and just take your trash with you, you know. What else? When you arrive down the office of Soy Tours, you will get a Corona beer. You're gonna love it. Also, don't forget to tip your guides. Those people, they carry everything up with you. They, they wait for you. They're really there. They're checking in with you. They're super nice guys super hard working just give them a little tip you know then you're back in antigua they also bring you back to your hotel or hostel or your accommodation and then you need one two three days at least to recover so don't plan anything for the next day you're going to be super exhausted and you're going to sleep like a baby can you climb a katanango on your own yes you can but i wouldn't recommend it why? I think it's dangerous. You can hurt yourself, you can get lost, you can be like not really prepared, nobody knows where you are, nobody will come and try to find you just to be informed. And it's still an active volcano, so Fuego is still an active volcano and stuff can happen. There were also, I think it was in 2017, that Fuego was like erupting and the eruption was so powerful that it killed some people it can happen you know it's nature it's a volcano that's the risk you take when you go up there it's nature anything can happen it's a freaking volcano so you need to be aware of that that there's some risk in wolf but living is risky that was also what i was concerned i was like oh my god if something could happen blah 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 and then i was like you know it's life if it's my time to to leave this planet it's time so it wasn't the time at that time, but I'm going to link the article like down here where, about this accident. So just keep in mind, hiking is risky, especially to active volcanoes. So that's it. Akatenango, I highly recommend it. Do it. Just prepare. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be the hike of your life. So if you like that video, please subscribe. You can do that here. Uh, give me a like, comment if you have something to say or just say like, hey, I like it. That would really help me to make other videos. And yeah, I'm happy that you watched this video, that you took your time and I wish you a great hike up there. Send me pictures, I would love it. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I share more of my travels around the world. Take care, bye.